I've told the kids a little bit about you before you came. Okay. Uh, this is Mr. Tor Norby. He's from Sun Microsystems. And Sun, uh, around 1995, I guess, released a programming language called Java, which has become very popular. I recommend it for, uh, for many of you um, after you learn some more Python. And I know Tor Norby and some other fellows from a, a podcast, an audio program called The Java Posse. And in fact, I'm wearing my Java Posse Roundup t-shirt because the Java Posse has this nice event in the winter uh, in Colorado where we went skiing, we talked about technical things. Uh, there were, how many of us there? 16. 60 or so. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, and um, so I've learned a lot about Java from the Java Posse podcast. And um, I also know uh, Mr. Norby because he goes to these big computer shows. There's a big show called Java One, which is attended by how many people? In, in the audience is about 15,000. About 15,000. And then um, if you go into this giant room, you see far away, if you're at the back, these giant screens, like, I don't know, 10 times bigger than these. And then you see a person up there. You see like a little dot of a person. And then you look on the giant screens, and then there's Mr. Norby's head, and he's talking to this huge audience of people. So he does very important work. He's done a lot of good stuff. Um, I'm going to stop talking now and let him tell you about, about what he's doing with Java FX. So let's welcome Mr. Norby. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I think I was around your age when I discovered computers and got totally excited about it and it's been my hobby ever since. Um, back when I started, we didn't have a computer. My school didn't have a computer. It was sort of a different time. Uh, but I used to buy these computer magazines and read the program listings. That's how I got started. Um, anyway, so I've been working at Sun for about 13 years now, and um, as Dave said, Java is a, is a very popular programming language. It's, fact, it's the most popular programming language in use today, uh, at about 30%. Um, and Java is more than just a language, it's also a platform. So you can actually run Python on the Java platform through something called Jython. Uh, and so what I'm going to show you today is something called JavaFX, which is a bunch of things. It's a language. Uh, it's also a graphics platform, and I think that's maybe the most important part for you, is that you can use this graphics platform even from Python. If you want to write um, programs that will run on cell phones, JavaFX is your best option today. Uh, but JavaFX can also be used to write web applications and desktop applications, and soon TV applications. We're going to be releasing that later this year. Wow. Well, give an example of what you could do with that. Well, so we actually had a demo at the Java One conference this year where Samsung has a device that has Java inside of it. And so you build an application that's like a shopping cart where you can sit and preview content. And you can actually you know, look at some preview trailers. There's a game. There's a chat application where you can chat with other people who are watching this movie at the same time. So there's a lot of things you can do. Um, so there's this conversion between all the devices, and JavaFX is nice in that it lets you target all them. Yes? Oh, is that like on a Blu-ray player? Or a yes, exactly. Java runs on the Blu-ray player. So um, JavaFX does not run on the Blu-ray player yet, but that's something we're working on. So um, I thought I would just start by showing you JavaFX script, which is the programming language that's easiest to use if you want to target JavaFX. Okay, so um, I have this program here, and you can actually see what it's doing. If I just press, click on this little I here, and I look over in this preview area, you can see it says just application content. That's because we have a really boring program here. We have a scene with just a text object, font of size 16, let's boost it up to 24. Let's change the string to any suggestions. Something about college for kids. Hello world. Have you guys learned that's the most important string in the universe? Hello world. So um, more stuff we can do where we can, for example, go and we can change the fill property of the scene. That's the, the color we're using. So let's change the color to I don't know, red. That's all it said. So when we do that, you can see the scene should update itself here to show a red background, which it does. So what we can do now is do some real programming. So far, we've just sort of cleared the static hierarchy of graphical objects. Uh, in fact, let's add a few more. Let's add a rectangle. So the rectangle is going to have a width of, let's say, 200. So I'm just creating a new rectangle now. Uh, let's make it a green. There it is. Not very nice. So now we can do some real programming here. So we've declared these scene objects. I can now put a for loop. Do you have, you have for in, in Python, right? We've been doing like for n in range something to make loops with uh, turtle graphics. Something like that? A for loop like that? Kind yeah. of like that, I'm yeah. I'm going to let x run the values 1 through 5. Uh -huh. 
Okay, I'm gonna make the width here much smaller. I'm gonna make this rectangle size 10, something like that. And we're gonna make the x position de depend on the x variable. See, now I have these little small squares here, right? I just basically created five rectangles in a loop. Like, let's make a few more of them. And let's make, uh, let's, let's actually make a square. We'll have a y variable as well. So, we're gonna have nested loop. Have you done nested loops yet? I don't think we have. What loops? Nested loops, so no, I have, I have a loop inside of a loop now. So, I'm gonna ref, let the y coordinate run from one through eight, and x coordinate. So you can see I created a grid now. I, sort of cre I let x run from one through eight, and inside each value of y, I, I did the horizontal. So if you look at this program, you can see that we're sort of computing the coordinate of each rectangle on the fly based on these two variables that we're iterating. Yes. There we go. Okay. Uh, we can also change the color on the fly. So uh, I could compute the color to be the, the red component could be y times 10. The green component could be x times 10. They're a constant blue. Something like that. So if you look at the square now, well, it's too subtle to see. There we go. So now you can see, sort of, that we have a little color fade here. Yeah, that shows up nice. Yeah. So all we've done, yeah, go ahead, we have a question. Um, is this the indentation, is that just for like organization? Yes, it makes it a lot easier to read. So some people think that that's a really nice advantage of Python, is that you can never get confused. Because I personally made some mistakes sometimes where I've not indented things right. So it looks like something which isn't nested should be. So if you have something like this, you might think that height should be some kind of nesting instead of, of width, but it's not. In Python, it would be, and this would be an error. So that's actually one of the really nice advantages for readability. The read, reading Python is very pleasant because of this. We can do some animation. Okay, so let's put, let's put all this inside of a group. So now you can see we've rotated them. Right, 45 degrees, you see there are diamonds instead. Cool. Let's, let's do this dynamically. So let's say we create a variable called angle, and uh, the variable is gonna be a number, where angle equals 0, 0.0, okay? So now it's gonna rotate to zero again. But what we can do is we can make it slowly change. So to do that, I'm going to pull in a timeline object. This is just an object which lets me uh, over time make changes. So we're gonna run this these keyframes over and over again. So have you do you know what keyframes are from animation? Yeah. Some of you do. Oh, I use flash, so. oh you use flash, so then you I know. Flash, so this is very familiar. Okay. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have two keyframes, one at second zero, and we want basically the value um, to be let's see, we want the angle to be zero at this time. Okay, and at two seconds, we want the angle to be minus 90. And then we're gonna play this timeline. So if I run this now, I believe we're gonna see, did I make a mistake? It looks like the, the yes. gradient was changing I'm, there. I made a mistake, because all I've done is, I set the angle, I initialized the rotation to the angle, which is zero. But even though we're changing the variable later, it's already been set. So what we have in JavaFX, which is a nice thing about the language, we can bind. This means that whenever this variable changes, this property will be updated. This is something that I think is unique with JavaFX, which I think when the Python guys are integrating JavaFX support. Okay, it's pretty subtle. But if you look carefully, you should see all the squares rotating. Oh, we can see it. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we should be able to do an additional rotation. Let's put, what I was trying to do earlier is put a, a group inside, outside this whole thing here. So outside of here. Here is where I want to put a new group. So I'm going to put a group like that with a content. Okay, so now we can actually set a rotation on the outer group as well. Yeah, that I'd like to see. So let's see what happens now. So now we're rotating the whole thing and inside of there rotating relative to the outer. 